if you can hear me over the wind and the surf, I find myself today on the Coronian Spit, which is a spit of land between Lithuania and the Russian Oblast of Kaliningrad. Now, according to Baltic tradition, it was formed when the goddess child Narinda rode her seahorse. There have been human settlements here since prehistory. This is why, in part, it is a World Heritage Protected Area, not just because of the nature, but because of the human history here. Everything from the Teutonic Knights through to the Prussians have lived, fished, farmed here, as have some Vikings. Now, the Coronian Spit has on it Europe's largest sand dunes, some stretching up to 60 metres high, and they are moving, which is why there is an urgent need for ongoing reforestation projects to protect this wild and beautiful nature. Now, few people have heard of Kaliningrad. Now, Kaliningrad is a Russian exclave, that is Russian territory completely outside of the rest of Russia, squeezed between Poland and Lithuania. Kaliningrad itself was originally founded in prehistory times, but the Teutonic Knights came in building one of their forts here in the early to mid 1200s. It has then been variously ruled by the Prussians and Konigsberg formed the East Prussian capital for a while. It then fell under the auspices of the Soviet Empire, returned back to Germany. During World War II, it was sieged brutally and bombed quite heavily. Following World War II, the remaining German populations were either sent to Siberia or forced into exile. And because in 1946 no one really had sympathy for Germany, Russia has got to keep the place ever since. Having had such mixed heritage, the architecture here actually reflects that. You've got some beautiful architecture that go back to the 16 and 1700s of the days of Prussian control. And you've got Soviet architecture. Now, me personally, I know which of those two I prefer. So just in case you're wondering, why is it that Russia wanted Kaliningrad so badly? The reason is over my right shoulder. Kaliningrad gives the Russians their only ice-free Baltic port. So even though there is no direct land routes, Russia will not give this up without a fight because without this, they don't have a 365 day a year access for their fleet to the Baltic. The other thing about Kaliningrad that I've found has been, it's been extremely friendly. Unlike other parts of Russia, Moscow, St. Petersburg, etc., where people can be a bit cold and standoffish, here, they're extremely friendly and open, especially when they find you're from Australia. The other thing is, it's extremely cheap. It's about one third the cost of the other parts of Russia. I had a local Kaliningrad person tell me the hotel I was staying in, Kaiserhof, is quite an expensive hotel, but it's less than a hundred bucks a day with a beautiful spa in it. So Kaliningrad, if you're ever coming to Russia, think about jumping over here too.